Hi guys, welcome back to All On and Law. Guys, uh, today I'm gonna talk about uh, a USMLE topic. USMLE, uh, what do you call it? For a topic for USMLE Step One, Step Two, CK, or even for a Step Three. The today's topic is uh, a pulmonary pulmonary nodule. So before starting a discussion on this, I would request you to subscribe to our channel that's all on and law and please do share our videos and if you like our videos please thumb up. So let's start a discussion on this. Before I would like to tell you in USMLE in USMLE CK okay that's a USMLE step 2 CK or a step 1 or a step 3 they usually give a clinical history in the sense that uh, like a 30 years old male okay um, comes to your clinic and you take an x-ray and you see to uh, what would you call a 3 centimeter of uh, pulmonary nodule okay so uh, which of the following is the next best step that is really very important what are you gonna do whether you're gonna ask for a previous x-ray are you gonna go ahead with the bronchoscopy are you gonna wa wait and watch okay Th these are the options so because this pulmonary nodule the 30 percent of the cases are usually they are malignant so that's why this is a really very important topic and uh, being a resident in internal medicine you should know what should be the next best step so let's start a discussion on this and uh, for example in USMLE if they give the clinical history a 30 years old male with 3 cm of calcified nodule in the what do you call in the um, right middle lung on just a routine x-ray okay he has come for his employment maybe he has come for employment he doesn't have any chief complaints no chief complaints nothing okay no chief complaints he's okay he's fine he's doing very well with his what do you call it, his job and because of the change in his job he wants just a employment checkup and uh, you find some three centimeter or 2.5 centimeter or two centimeter what do you call a, a nodule in the right uh, middle lung or anywhere okay so now what would be the next best step that's really very important okay so the first step would be the first step can anybody guess the first step if a case of permanent nodule is given what you need to do is ask the patient for a prior x-ray really this is very important why we should ask for the prior x-ray prior chest x-ray okay why we should ask because if you ask for the prior x-ray the things what you can check is the size of the nodule okay size of the nodule whether it was present before now it's before it wasn't there now it's present you can come to know on the size of this nodule you can come to know okay presence then the size okay so if there's any more than this if if, you, if in the prior x-ray you have he had only one nodule now it's two or three then you, and uh, you can find it okay and the calcification number you can write over here and what do you call um, calcifications because calcifications uh, points towards the diagnosis of a benign in nature okay so this is really very important if there's a popcorn calci uh, calcification uh, they're usually by the hematomas right um, whereas a bull's eye uh, calcification are caused by granulomas so these are the things you know very well okay the popcorn the popcorn calcification is due to hammer Thomas okay really important sometimes they give in the clinical step one in a USM step one they will ask you the, they will give the history of uh, uh, clinical history of a cancer and something like that be, and they give the popcorn appearance of the calcification of a nodule then I ask you the diagnosis so remember hematoma okay and uh, if there's a bull's eye calcification then it's due to granulomas okay so remember granulomas okay guys 
So these are things. Okay, now what was the first step when you get uh, uh, in the what do you call it, in USMLE step one with the permanent nodule? What is the first step? Is a prior exit, right? Uh, we came to know why we should ask for the prior X-ray. It is, it is going to save your time also because if it's a first X-ray, then you need to go the detail what you call uh, investigation with that. So okay, you cannot leave the patient uh, um, right away. So you need to investigate for that. So that's a really very important. Asking for the prior as uh, X-ray is very important in USMLE step steps examination. Okay, guys. So let's start about the next step. If for example, okay, if prior x-ray is not available, it's not available, he says, no, I never had an x-ray in my life, and this is the first time I'm visiting the hospital. So what would you do? What will be your option? So now you classify, classify that patient, classify that patient into the low risk or a high risk. This is really very important. Classify him into low risk, are a high risk okay guys now first ask for the prior x-ray if it's a prior x-ray is not available then go ahead with the classify him as LR or HR that's a low risk or a high risk okay let's move on who are low risk who is he how can we tell him that he is in a low risk okay now H remember if the age of the patient is less than 35 years, okay, very important. Next is a smoking history. If he's a non smoker, non smoker, really very important, okay. And if the calcification of what you call nodule is calcified, is a calcified. It's really very important if it's non smoker and calcified is very important one look for the age one is asked for the history of smoking is a non smoker age is less than 35 and the calcified nodule okay if these are the things present in this patient then you can tell him and you can label him as a low risk patient okay right now what would you do if he's a low risk patient? Okay. Let's start with the what you do. What to do now. What to do if he is a low risk, sorry, a low risk, low risk, low risk, what do you call a low risk patient? Then what you need to do is, you may follow the patient with a chest x-ray or a chest CT every three months for two years. So every three months, you should tell him to follow up, okay? Every three months, he should have an x-ray, look at the size, look at the calcification, um, what do you call, look at the, what do you call, uh, location of this um, nodule, if there's any n increase in the number of this uh, nodule, just look at this because the treatment for uh, benign and the malignant is totally different. That's why. And the malignant, you know very well the, what are the, uh, what do you call it, survival rate. Really very, very important and very critical. That's why. So three months, we need to, every three months, every three months for two years. Okay? If the patient and if the growth is, if, for example, yeah, for example, the size is 2.5 centimeter, okay, and uh, for every three months you started taking an x-ray or a chest CT and the size remained to 2.5 centimeter only, then there's no need to follow. Stop the follow. -up. No follow up, okay? Got it? What to do if he is a low risk patient? Do what you call three months, every three months for two years take an x-ray or a set, uh, CT chest, okay? And uh, look for the size. If there's no increase in the size of this, uh, what do you call, nodule, then you can say him, no need to follow up, you are done, you can go ahead, okay? So now who are the patients with a high risk? Who are they? Now, as we talked before, the age, look at the age of the patient. If it's more than 50, right 
If it's more than 50, it's very important age. Because in USMLE examination, they will give you the history of a patient with 55 years old or sometimes 34 years old, sometimes near 36 years old also. So just look at the age of the patient, look at the smoking history. Smoking, very important. Look at the smoking as a very, very, what do you call it, is a risk factor for uh, developing cancers, okay? And if there is a, what do you call no jewel, and there's a smoking history, age is 50, then think him, label him as a high risk patient because he may likely to have bronchogenic cancer. Okay? The what would be the next best step? The best diagnostic procedure is going to be the open lung biopsy and the removal of the nodule at the same time. So what would you do? Is just open lung biopsy. Okay? So this is really very important. So remember the other things that is a bronchoscopy Bronchoscopy will not reach the peripheral lesions, okay? That's why it can reach only the central. Remember, okay? And this bronchoscopy is performed blindly. Okay, so these are the things that you should know about uh, what you call pulmonary nodule. So remember, this pulmonary nodule is a really very important topic for uh, USMLE examination. So now you knew how to proceed with the what you call uh, managing a patient with a pulmonary nodule uh, first uh, look at the what you call uh, first ask for the prior x-ray right first thing is ask for the prior x-ray if there is available then it's good if not label him as a low risk or a high risk depending on the conditions if a low risk then age should be less than 35 years non-smoker with a calcified nodule what you need to do just uh, take a chest x-ray or a chest CT every three months for two years if the size of the what you call um, the the growth doesn't increases, then you can stop the follow up. If and in high risk patients, if the age is fifty more than fifty years of age with a smoking history and there is a nodule, then you can label him as a cancerous patient, high risk patient, bronchogenic cancerous patient. Then you should go ahead with the open lung biopsy. Okay, guys, and uh, remember the bronchoscopy will not reach to the peripheral lesions; it only reaches to the central and the data obtained by the bronchoscopy is not specific okay guys so thank you so much for watching this video i hope this video is very useful for your usml examination or any other medical board examination around the globe and thank you so much if you like this video please thumb up thank you so much and take care and please do not forget to subscribe and please do not forget to share our videos with your friends take care